Morning, everybody. I'm a little slow today. It was a crazy day yesterday and an even um, crazy morning. So I haven't had a chance to get myself situated yet. So bear with me. Things ready and then we'll be ready to go. Hope everybody is doing good. Um, my row is done, which I showed people last night. It's already on the website for pre orders. I'm super excited about that. That is like wicked cool to me. All right. I'm going to lay out another block. And then we'll be ready. Yesterday was just a weird, weird day. I mean, it really was a crazy day. How is everybody? Let me know when you're on so that I can uh, make sure we're all set. Because Zoom was acting super weird. Actually, I think... What block am I on? I think I'm all messed up over here. I am, as usual. All right, hold on. Just give me a minute so that I can... I told you, my brain is just not with it today. Just one of those things. And my allergies, holy crap. I wish they would just stop because they're driving me crazy. I was looking at the wrong blocks at first, so I'm a little bit messed up. Normally I have this all done and I'm behind. Did you guys catch the video last night that I did? You see all the crazy fabric we got coming in that came in that panel i can't get over how big that panel is it's nuts all right i think i'm just about done sorry about that just one of those days All right, let's get going. Now, the first one is block 31. Uh, and actually we're gonna do block 32 first because I have that one already over here. This one's pretty simple. It's gonna be a basic nine patch with half square triangles in these four spots. So I've already done one, but I'm gonna show you how I did the other one. For your purposes, I am going to put a line on here. Normally I do not, but I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing when I make a half square triangle. This is probably one of the more traditional ways to do a half square triangle. Um, so we've got two squares bigger than we need, right sides together. And I've drawn a line diagonally from one corner to the other. And what I'm gonna do is sew a quarter of an inch on each side of the line, and then use that line as my cutting line. When you cut them apart, you'll have two half square triangles. And in this instance, cause I'm using a quarter inch um, foot with a guide, I'm gonna put the guide right on the line. Normally I wouldn't make the line. I'm doing that right now, just so that you can see if you haven't seen it before, we've gone over it many times. Normally I just use my grid glide down here with hat, which has all of my measurements. And as long as I keep the corner following the line and start with my uh, guide on the, on the corner here, I will sew a quarter of an inch without having to draw a line. 
And I do that a lot because it does save a little bit of time. So I'm not even gonna cut my thread. Again, I'm all about saving as much time as possible and the least amount of movement possible. All I did was bring out a little bit of extra thread to give myself some room. And I'm gonna go down the other side. Now we can cut on the line. And I'll cut the other one. It's gonna be warm today. It was warm yesterday. And there you go. There are our half square triangles. So all I'm going to do is iron it real quick. It's going to be hot. I was hot yesterday. Even being inside an air conditioned store, humidity was just crazy yesterday. I don't know what was going on yesterday, but Tuesday for a Tuesday, it was nothing. Started with the class, online class. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, it wasn't a full class, but it gives you um, the basics. And if you had any questions or wanted to know more, um, wanted a demonstration, you can come in anytime. I'm planning a video probably later on today or tomorrow morning to sh show, as promised, how quick and easy it is to adjust your foot for different quilts before you start working with rulers. I got a couple of tips and tricks that I'm going to show you. All right, we are ready. And we've got... There. And one there. There you go. That is our nine patch. So I'm just going to start sewing these together and I'm going to chain piece. So that means I'm not going to cut my thread in between. Again, it doesn't save a ton of time, but over the time of a quilt, it saves a fair amount. I'm going to iron all of my fabric seams towards these solid blocks and that will help in the long run because all of the seams will automatically set up to nest and line up. I'm just going to cut these apart, iron my seams, and lay them back down. And remember, I'm going to iron them towards the solid fabric. And if you put the solid fabric on top while you're setting your seam, the seam will automatically be exactly where you want it. What else is going on? I don't know, there's so much. It's almost impossible to keep track of it all. It's crazy. We've got row by row or quilters truck starting soon. Just super excited. Not soon, soon, about a month away, a month and a half away, but soon enough. Got two. Shut the volume off on the balloon. I'm super excited about Roviro. I love Roviro. Quilt is trap. It's the thing. Okay, so let's see where we go on. Mm. 
There we go. All right. Now we've got to add this piece to this side and then we're ready to sew the block together. I was here late last night. Got to work in and one thing led to another and when you know it, it's like 9.30 at night in the blink of an eye. Time just gets away too fast lately. Not enough time in the day to get it all done. All right, we're almost done with this block. The next one's gonna take me a little bit longer because there's a lot, a lot of small pieces. There we go. So we have our rows. Now we just got to sew them together. I know I've said it a zillion times. But I'm going to say it again just because we may have new people on. So I'm going to be sewing this way. I put my pins on an angle, I'm starting on one side of the seam and coming up the other side of the seam. I do that so that when I sew, I can stop with my needle down right in the seam before I have to take my pin out. Um, sometimes just the act of taking the pin out is enough to throw your seams off. All right, there's one. Now we just got to put this one on. I hope you guys are enjoying this. You really are going to be able to hone your skills, some basic skills. And I actually like the quilt. 
really looking forward to working on it on the long run as soon as I figure out what I want to do because I really don't want to rush it. And once I start, I will happily start taking some videos of it. I just don't want to rush it for the sake of getting it done to, to show you guys. I really want to have fun with it because it's going to be in the shop hanging for quite a while. I don't have a lot of quilts that are mine per se. So I just want to enjoy it. All I have to do is iron the block, but it's done. Now we're going to work on the next one. Listen. Oh, there it is. Okay. So. All of these blocks, pretty much, not all, but most of them are just nine patches. But how you get to the nine patch is different um, with each block. So we've got four patch, little mini four patches in the four uh, main points, north, south, east, and west. And then I'm going to be making half square triangles to go into the corners. And this time, I am not going to make a line, draw a line. I'm just going to do it like I normally do. So you can see that too. So again, I'm lining up my guide with the corner on top and I'm having this corner follow my quarter inch line that way. Save a little bit of time in the process. And then I'm just going to cut. And by all means, you do not have to do it the way I do it. I'm just showing you another option. If you feel more comfortable drawing the line, then draw the line. I'm just giving you other op options to work. What I do on a regular basis. All right. All I got to do is iron these blocks and lay them in, and then we'll start on the little four patches. Maybe this week I'll start working on the, the big quilt, the scissor quilt, and do videos. The only thing with that is I gotta leave it on the long arm until I'm done. Because it's too much of a pain in the butt to take it off and put it back on. So let me think about it. If I think I can do it quick, you know, and not have it interfere with anything else, maybe I will. I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. All right, get our blocks back the way they were. Here we go. There is our block. I know it's hard to tell, but that's our block. So for now, I'm just going to go through and some quick chain piecing on some of these little squares. I'm definitely going to use a scant quarter of an inch on these because on this block specifically and cut it down because there's a lot of small piecing here.
doing it that way. It's so much easier to do it this way. All right, now I just have to iron these little squares. And as usual, I make sure to iron them in the same, iron the seam in the same direction on all of these little mini blocks. Anytime you're doing something like this, that's a four patch or a nine patch. If you iron the seams towards the same fabric, if you're using the same fabric in all of them, it'll be easier for you to line up your seams. If you are doing a scrappy quilt, then you have to iron them or, or do the same half of the um, four patch or nine patch at the same time so that you do iron them on the same side, if that makes sense. All right, now we're just gonna do the other side. I'm telling you, all of these white on whites and neutrals, it's, sometimes it's, it's, nerve wracking just to try and figure out which side is the right side. Is it Mother's Day next weekend already? I swear time is just flying by. I can't keep track of what day it is. There's so much going on. It's just crazy. For those of you out there that are local, don't forget, you have a gift registry. So it doesn't have to be just for Christmas. It could be for birthdays, anniversary, or Mother's Day. Come on in and fill out a card and send your um, child or husband or siblings down here and I will give them the card for what you want. All right, next part, almost done, not too long. Now we're gonna put these together, these little four patches. Once we do that, the rest of this is gonna go pretty quickly. Then it's like a traditional nine patch. I know we've gone over this before, but it's always worth going over. And this is probably one of the hardest things for new quilters to learn. I'm, I've set my seam. What that means are nesting the seams. The top seam is going that way. The bottom seam is going this way. And when you put them together, they will nest together and remain nice and flat. That's how you make sure your seams line up. And it does take a little bit of work to learn. It's probably one of the first things that you 
learn. And once you learn it, you'll never forget it. And you'll be amazed at how quickly your seams will start looking a lot better. You see me lifting the foot, the presser foot? That's because I don't want, I'm trying very hard to get my seams to be neat. So if the machine comes down and it wants to push this seam going the opposite direction, I will lift the foot and make sure my seam stays flat where I want it to. All of these little things, it, that's why this quilt is a wonderful quilt to learn on. Um, you're going to learn all these different blocks, but you're consistently doing the same thing over and over. So you will be able to hone your skills on your quarter inch or scant quarter of an inch seam and lining up your seams and trying to make your seams neater. It's not absolutely necessary the first thing you learn, but the more you learn, um, the better you'll be as a quilter. And the neater your seams are, the easier it is to quilt and the less issues you will have. Even if you're just trying to stitch in the ditch, going over um, bulky seams will make it very difficult. Your needle doesn't always want to move. It will stop. You'll build up additional bulk in more threads and possibly knotting. So it's just the next step in the learning process of getting better. Teeny little four catches are done. Just shine them one more time to start. All right. Now we're on in the home stretch. All right. Here is our nine catch. It's just a matter of trying to look at a block. And that's another thing that you'll learn and you'll get more comfortable with in this quilt is looking at a block and learning how to sew it together to get it to look the same way. And it takes a little bit of practice and I'm not always right either. I can tell you that. There are times where I think, okay, I know how to do this. And I end up ripping it out because it doesn't work well without having to do an intricate Y seam or something silly like that. Almost done. Are you guys getting excited about Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt. It's that time of year. You should be able to, as of last week, pre-order online on Hoop Sisters website. And if you put me as your local Hoop Sister store and send me a copy of a receipt and a print screen showing me as your store, I will put you in for the drawing for a free Hoop Sisters CD of your choice. That does not include the blocks of the month and the annual quilts that we have in the current ones, current and um, all good things quilt, but any other CD of your choice, which could be over a $200 value. And then each week I will be doing a video for the box for that week showing what I do to get them done. This one's there. Oops. 
we go. Okay, now we're gonna put the other side of our blocks on and then we'll sew the rows together and we will be done. Hoop Sisters, the mystery quilt is, if you haven't done Hoop Sisters or you're even curious about Hoop Sisters, the mystery quilt is the most affordable option for you to try it out. This year's mystery quilt has all the sizes in blocks, which doesn't always happen, which what that means is it has five inch blocks all the way up to nine inch blocks. So you have a wide variety in how big of a quilt that you would like to make or can make. It's gonna be a cool one. I've seen it, I can help you figure out fabric. Probably, I would say a little bit more traditional than some of the uh, Hoop Sisters quilts in the past, but I like it a lot. What can I say? I like almost everything that they do. We have battle eyes are in stock. We have scissors in stock. We have rulers in stock. So we have just about everything you need. It's going to be fun. It's usually a lot of fun. It's a cool technique. Um, I think Hoop Scissors is the best at figuring it out. If you do not have the long arm, or don't, or don't feel comfortable doing any kind of intricate free motion quilting on your own with your domestic machine, but you do have an embroidery machine. One of the coolest things about hoop scissors is everything usually in one. I haven't looked completely at this one, but normally you are piecing and quilting in the hoop all at the same time. The designs are beautiful. Okay, now we've got our rows. All we have to do is put our rows together and this block is done. One of the other things about Hoop Sisters that I think is amazing is Hoop Sisters with the help of Quilter's Dream, which if you know me, that's the only batting I sell, developed Battleizer, and everybody asks, what bat, what is Battleizer? Well, Battleizer is batting and stabilizer all in one. And normally when you embroider anything with batting in it, you have to put a stabilizer first in your hoop and then put batting on top of it. With Battleizer, you just hoop the Battleizer. It takes one part out and you don't have to hoop it drum tight which uh, I don't know about you, but the older I get, the worse my hands are getting as far as arthritis and all of that stuff. So it's a little bit harder sometimes to hoop really tight. And the idea that we don't have to worry about getting it super tight is a joy. Plus, like I said, when you take the block out of the hoop, it's quilted and pieced and everything. Most of the quilts are like that. There are still a few that they've come out with that are, you know, you put, it, it's quilted, but you put the backing on after you assemble it. Those are not my favorite. Everyone comes out with those, but they're just not my favorite. Most of the Hoop Sisters quilts are quilted in the hoop and they're beautiful. Okay, now we have to put the last row on and our blocks for this week are done. Telling you, I feel like the weeks are just, the weeks and the months are just flying by.
All right. I just have to iron it, but there is block 31. In block 32. That's it for today. I'm going to iron these out and I will trim them up. And I promise, I know I said this week would put the row together, but it's gotten away from me this week. So we'll do them next week. We already have enough blocks to do the third row and we're working on our fourth one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those weeks. If you have any questions or comments, you know where I am. And I hope you have a lovely day. Talk to you later. Bye.